in the Jewish religion of the time of Jesus, Gentiles were to be regarded as unclean. They didn't have the one God. They didn't have some of the truths of Israel. So they were known as dogs. I don't know exactly what he entailed, what is entailed in Jesus' mind. But the point of this story is really not there. The point of the story is the marvelous faith that this lady showed. First of all, we see that Jesus said he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's to say, at that time, don't be misled into thinking that Jesus was never, ever sent to the Gentiles. We know that later on, he was sent worldwide through the Apostle Paul and other agents of God to the whole world. But at that stage in the proceedings of the gospel preaching, he went first because Israel were God's chosen people. They deserved to have the gospel of the kingdom preached to them first. But look how this lady persuaded Jesus. And he was marveling. He said, you have incredible faith. Yes, you, your faith is wonderful. Now, why was it wonderful? Because he said, or she said rather, you are Lord, son of David, not God, son of David. You're the Lord Messiah. You're the son of David. That was tremendous faith. She knew who Jesus was. He was the Lord, little L-O-R-D, the Lord Messiah. And so she was able to persuade him and indirectly persuade God, who is the father, of course, and the sponsor of Jesus. And her faith then commended her to Jesus. She bowed down, that she fell at his feet. Uh, today, the word worship tends to mean you think somebody is God. That's not true in the Bible. To bow down is right there. She fell at his feet and begged him, Lord, help me. And her, his answer was provisional. And he pointed out that Gentiles don't have the same access. They didn't have the same access as the children of Israel. But she argued with him. You can argue with God in prayer, as Abraham did on one occasion, said, don't destroy all those people. And God even listened to Abraham. And here, the Lord Messiah, little L, little Lord Messiah said, please help me. Or she said to him, please help me. Even, very clever line from her, by the way, even the dogs ate on the crumbs under the table. Isn't that a brilliant answer? He was overwhelmed by her sharpness, her faith, her faith in the fact that he was the Messiah. And so that request was granted. I think that's a beautiful interchange. And you'll have to ask Jesus in the resurrection exactly what was in his mind when he said dog. He's recognizing the fact that the Gentiles were viewed as unclean people in the theology of Israel at that time. Right. Is it fair to say, Anthony, mm. that there's an air of superiority uh, Israelites because Israelites believe that out of all the nations of, of the world, God had chosen absolutely. That, right? that's, that's it's absolutely right, and it was true. They shouldn't abuse that privilege, of course. It was a fact, and God had told them, you are my chosen people. I've selected you from all the nations. But that shouldn't give you a sense of arrogance. It should simply impress upon you that you therefore have more service to offer these people. And Jesus was doing that extremely well. I love the way this woman here with her great theological intelligence managed to persuade the master rabbi to help her anyway. And so that wonderful request was granted. Beautiful story.